Hi everyone, welcome back to Guiding Light Videos and I'm Brad. Now today we're going to make an amazing meat sauce. Um, this meat sauce is great for anybody that's a veteran that's been around the kitchen for a long time and knows their way around the cupboards and things. Or it's great for somebody that's trying things out for the first time and just getting used to the kitchen and uh, maybe breaking out on your own into this world and starting your own cooking. Um, it's something that's really going to impress. It's full of lots of flavor. And guys, um, I'm going to go over the ingredients here in a second, but just keep in mind that you can always, always change ingredients. Everything here is a recommendation. There's substitutions allowed. Use your own judgment. Uh, do what you really tastes good to you, but I'll give you a base of what's going on. And that way from there, you can go on and you can choose your own uh, things along the way. If you don't like garlic, don't put it in. Maybe if you don't have fresh garlic, but you want it, use powdered garlic. If you don't have chili flakes, use uh, cayenne pepper, uh, just things like that. Or you can use a fresh peppers. So um, just keep in mind that there's always substitutions allowed and nobody's going to care whether your garlic was fresh or not. What they're going to care about is that you put love into your food and they're going to taste that love. Okay, now I'll get into the So here's the ingredients that we're going to start out with. And again, I have to emphasize everything is substitutable. Okay, so we're going to start out with a couple of onions. I've got a couple of smaller onions here. You can use a large one if you want some fresh garlic. Uh, obviously some salt and pepper. I love oregano. It's great in lots of things. It's also one of the best antivirals out there. They say oregano oil is one of the best things for killing viruses around. So something good to keep in mind these days. Uh, chili flakes. So I use the red chili flakes. I've got two cans of whole tomatoes. Uh, these tomatoes are 28 ounces um, or it's also uh, almost 800 milliliters. Um, some tomato paste, it's a five and a half ounce can, or about just over 150 milliliters. And then we've got some olive oil, some red wine, I got a little uh, French stick here, a uh, baguette, sorry, for some garlic bread later on. Mine happens to be whole wheat today, but you can use white, whatever you prefer again. we got some ground beef. I like to buy my ground beef in bulk and we split it up into packages like this and freeze them. They're nice and thin so they thaw out very easily. Great idea. Uh, some Italian sausage. I use mild Italian sausage because I don't like the heat to be dictated to me. So I can just decide how many chili flakes I want and how hot I want to make it. So that's why I use mild. But you know, if you see hot, go for it and you want to use it. And obviously you got a little Parmesan cheese and we have some parsley over there to finish things off. Okay. Let me get all this sorted out and I'll get right back to you in a minute and we'll start this day off. Okay, so I have my pot on the oven right now on the burner. It's just a little over max or sorry, a little over medium heat probably. Add maybe a tablespoon, healthy tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. And let's get my onions going. We get them in there. Add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper right off the bat. Um, it's always good to season as you go along, not just at the end. So I can't really tell you how much to put. You know, I just put a little pinch each uh, step along the way and you sort of do it to flavor, okay? Um, we get these going a little bit. We sort of sweat them out. My pan's a little hot um, because I got a little distracted. Doing the videos is something uh, You'll learn to do along the way. I'm going to add in my garlic. You know, setting up all the stuff between scenes, I left the burner, I left it on. Um, so I tried to cool my pan down. But, you know, apparently I'm human. Okay, I'm just going to let that sweat out for a minute or two. Then I'm going to take these out of the pan, out of the pot. And I'm going to stick my meat in there and I'm going to cook that off. Then we start combining everything all together. Okay. Let's see how we're going here. And sorry, normally I wouldn't uh, get my onions too brown, guys. Um, I like to just sort of make them translucent, sort of like they're semi cooked, I guess. And uh, really depending on the size and what kind of texture you like in your sauce and everything. So um, it all depends, you know. You do what you think is best. I'm just sort of showing you the way I do it, but again, Everybody has their preferences. So that's almost done there. I'm just going to add in a little bit of oregano as we go as well. Just because, again, I love that oregano flavor. And it's so healthy for you. Um, and that's what starts to turn the dial for this. 
you know onions and garlic are always a great smell in the house you put a little bit of oregano in there too and people know you're meaning business <laughs> okay so I think that those are um, not too bad right now I like them I don't mind a little bit of crunch in mine when I eat my sauce um, although we're gonna cook it for quite a while so by then there probably won't be a lot of crunch anyway but just wanted to get them all kind of translucent sort of see through a little bit and uh, they look good to go so I'm gonna put them into my little bowl here on the side and I'm gonna get most of them you know I'll leave a few in there just adds a little bit of flavor to the next step right okay and speaking of next step I've got my beef right here throw that into the pot and I've got a couple of um, sausages here again the mild ones so I just basically cut them lengthwise right down there and take them out of the skin okay and there you go easy peasy and you got some nice flavored pork this way supposed to you can buy ground pork too but um you know in the sausage they put a little bit of fennel a little bit of seasoning along the way this makes it a little bit more flavorful in my opinion now let's start breaking this up a little bit get it all combined we don't want we don't want bites of pork and bites of beef we want it all combined together nicely and you know what I think we can add another pork in there too my ratio seems to be pretty heavy on the beef at the moment so let's go and add one more piece of pork we'll get another sausage I'll cut it down this right down the middle there and we'll add it to the pot and that's the whole thing about cooking if you've got something extra in the house add it to the pot you know some people even like to throw a pork chop or a chicken leg in here and then they take it out before they serve and it just seems to add flavor you know so uh, don't be afraid to experiment a little bit like I said it's the whole meaning of being in the kitchen is showing your personality on a plate okay we'll let this keep going for a few minutes then I'm gonna add the onions back in um, you notice I had some tomatoes I had put into a pot or sorry into a bowl already you can also see my tomatoes here the can is a little wet I always wash off the top of the can before I open it you just never know where it's been it's traveled thousands and thousands of kilometers to get to you probably from some factory in a truck in boxes then on the shelves in the grocery store just wash it off and be safe guys now you'll notice in my bowl here what I'm going to do with these you can just crush them up with your hand again hands probably the best tool you have in the kitchen but another option if you're a little squeamish or you don't like getting your hands in there no problem how about just using a pair of scissors and sticking them right in the can here and look at that just chop everything up it doesn't have to be chopped up well you just want to break each tomato at least that way when it's stewing away in the pot it'll break down even further and uh, you'll never know that it was even whole tomatoes at one point we'll keep stirring this in sorry for the mess I am a guy so we do create messes um, a little more salt along the way well, your, your meat especially you want that kind of season well and I'm putting in a healthy pinch of pepper here as well probably a good half teaspoon of each I would say at this point right now and you know a good idea could be here too this is also a good spot to add in some chili flakes if you like the heat right in the meat that's good you can also just add them into the sauce as you cook along either way is fine again and it's all about preference I'm just gonna put a bit more oregano at least a half teaspoon of that if not more okay okay so let's just add our onions right back in there we'll give it a nice stir up mix them up make sure our meat is nice and flavored before we move on All right. there we go we want those onions to incorporate with the meat and everybody exchange a little bit of flavor you taste a little bit of meat and the onions you taste a little bit of onions and the meat you know and you want that at each stage you want to allow it to get together and be happy 
Okay, let's add some tomato. And you'll see I got most of them. I didn't break a couple. Let's just give it another couple chops if you want. Okay. And there we are. And then with the other bowl, like I said, I like using the hands. Just get in there and make sure that you break them below the surface of the liquid. That way they weren't going to squirt you. you. You break them up here, you're going to get squirted in the face or somewhere anyway. So you break them down inside the liquid and it's great. They're all broken up and let's add those to the party. There we go. Almost like a pool party, right? Everybody in the pool. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, got a tomato in there. It's not too broken up. There we go. I'll mix it all up good again. And my heat is up a little high right now. I'm between five and six on my dial. I want to make sure I get it up to a boil, then I'll turn it all down after that. Let's keep on going with our seasoning. I'd say another tablespoon or teaspoon, tablespoon of oregano. Maybe about the same with some peppers. And because I have tomatoes in my hand, I'm going to use the other hand here. And we'll get a little bit of salt in there again. And a little bit of pepper. And guys, you know, you, you can see I am using a bit of extra salt. And I found, after watching all these cooking shows, I've started to use more salt. Because, you know, the culinary experts call for it a lot of times. When you're at home cooking for just you and the wife, you want to cut back a little bit and make it healthier, by all means do that and don't put so much in. I'm cooking for an audience sort of here a little bit, so I'm putting a bit extra in. Hopefully you can taste the love that I put in there with it, okay? Um, now, later on, we're going to add a little bit of sugar as well because tomatoes can be very acidic. Um, and what I'm going to do over here as well, I've got my tomato paste. And I don't like adding tomato paste right to a pot right away because I find it kind of acidic. So I'm going to put it over here onto my extra pan I've got going on the side. And I'm just going to cook my tomato paste a little bit. Just to make it more of a roasted tomato than a raw tomato. You know what I mean? And we're going to put in the whole can of it there for sure. Well, look at this. My paste is almost ready here. You can hear it sizzling away a bit. Um, it's just turning from raw tomatoes over to cooked tomatoes. And I think I will just add that right in. And there you go. Okay. Delicious. And we'll stir that right in there. Okay. Um, I'm also going to add some water in here. I like my tomato sauce to be pretty thick and stick to my pasta. So you think it's counterintuitive almost to add water, but um, I find adding water at the beginning allows you to cook it longer and it'll reduce down all that water and it'll concentrate the flavors. And I'm telling you, it's the greatest thing ever. So I'm going to add a little bit less than a cup, I would say, of water. So. You know, a good judge when you take the tomatoes out of the can, get out about a half a can of tomato or so. And later on, if it's thickening up on you too much, add a bit more. You're not quite ready for dinner yet, but it looks like this sauce is ready. Hey, it's happened to us all, especially if we have guests over, right? Um, just add a bit more water and let it cook down again, okay? We're gonna let that reduce. I'm gonna get my peppers roasting and I'll be back with you in a minute. All roasted up, ready to go. Put it into a bowl. And put a little saran on there. Okay, so the pepper's been steaming away for about 10 minutes or so. And let's see what we have here. Take that off. Jeez, I ended up getting some peppers without any stems. It's great to get a stem and you have an extra handle to work with. Now watch. Basically, the skin's just basically coming right off, eh? And if some of it's still left on, hey, that's okay again. Don't be so meticulous. Just be 
thorough as you can but don't worry about anything a little extra left over here and there I'm gonna skim this then I'm gonna cut it up and seed it and we'll get on to the next step speaking of next steps um, something good idea to have done probably when I was um, cooking the meat to deglaze the pan a little bit um, but I'm gonna put some wine in now and just a little bit to give it some body you know um, wine you don't have to use a super expensive wine but just, just uh, grab something that you like drinking anyway right because you're gonna drink most of the bottle you're not gonna pour much of it in there I pour it in a good glass you know uh, say a half a cup something like that I put in there and obviously the chef needs a little bit as well um, I've got a nice local wine this time I'm in the Okanagan but you can get wines from all over the world and whatever you prefer you want a big heavy one that's fine this is actually a Merlot get a Cab Sav if you like oh yeah that's the right wine for me <laughs> okay so I'm gonna just get rid of some of the skin here and um, nice way that I like to cut up my peppers just go right down the side okay and do it again well, I got a lot of juice in there okay right down the side again okay and right down the side again and right there the side again and look what you're left with almost nothing right no waste oh basically just get these into some pieces here and sorry I'm not the best knife skills in the world probably but hey we get it done just try and do your pieces fairly evenly because you, whenever you're cooking anything you like to do fairly even sized pieces even if it's a stew you want even sized potatoes carrots with your beef and all that because everything tends to cook a little bit more evenly when they're all about the same sizes huh? and there we go and let's get those bad boys in there a few chars here and there can only add flavor okay so we've got our wine in there we've got our peppers in there it's starting to smell really really nice and guys can't emphasize this enough you've got to taste along the way yep I'm tasting along the way and I'm thinking I know gonna add a little more salt gonna add a little more pepper and uh, I'm going to add a bit of everything almost here. Don't be afraid. We want these flavors to jump out, right? You want to taste them. You don't just want to influence. You want to taste your flavors. And don't be afraid. Um, you know, put more seasoning. Put more seasoning. Uh, make it stand out. You don't want to be just boiling a can of tomatoes, right? You want to be adding flavors to it along the way. You want to be able to taste all your flavors that you add. If you can't taste the flavor, add a bit more. You know what? I'm committed to how much garlic and onions I have in there. But if I wanted more of that flavor, I'd add a bit of onion powder or a little garlic powder. Hey, what the heck, you know? We're not in a restaurant right now. We're at home and we're just making do and we want the best flavors for our family, our loved ones, our friends, uh, whoever we happen to be cooking for. If you have pride when you're doing it, it's gonna turn out well, I'm telling you. Even if it's your first attempt, don't worry. It's gonna turn out well when you have pride in your cooking and when you put love into it, you care about it. You don't do it with your eyes closed and just think, oh yeah, I can do this with my eyes closed in five minutes. I'm just going to whip it up. No, take your time. Enjoy the process. Enjoy, this is part of the process as well, you know. And enjoy your day in the kitchen. When you're in a hurry, fine. Do a little fast fry of some sort. But I've got an afternoon. This is a Sunday afternoon dinner. And like I said, we're going to put some on a couple plates. We're going to put some in a bowl for the fridge for maybe tomorrow leftover, maybe for lunch. And we're going to put some into a Tupperware and we're going to freeze it for a, a rainy day. Okay, we'll let this go for a little while. Um, I'm going to come back later. We're going to throw together some garlic bread and we're going to enjoy this fine meal. By the way, guys, I did say that this is a spaghetti meal, but um, this is some bocconcini. Bocconcini, sorry, bocconcini. If you can ever find this, this is the way to go. In my opinion, this is like one of my favorite pastas. Unfortunately, I don't have enough for today, but when you look at it, it's like a spaghetti, but there's a little hole there. Okay, so um, there's a hole right down the middle of the spaghetti. So it really sucks up that sauce, 
and it's great for a sauce like this. You just get the sauce in and out of it everywhere. Okay, we're gonna let this go for a good hour or so. Let it let it um, reduce a bit. I might add a bit more water. We'll taste it along the way. We'll add seasoning if we need to. And I think it's uh, time to sit down and have a little glass of wine for a while while this cooks on its own. We'll come back, we'll cook up, we'll boil up some pasta and we'll make some garlic bread and we'll finish off this fine meal by plating it and showing you what it looks like. So it's been about an hour now. Uh, my pot, my pasta sauce has been cooking and you can see how much it's reduced, right? It started right up there and it's gone all the way down right now. So it's gotten quite a bit thicker. Um, you see that there's not really a lot of water on top of the sauce and it's gotten nice and thick and uh, when that hits the plate, it would be great. I have some water boiling. I'm going to start my pasta in a couple minutes here, but first I'm going to get my garlic bread going. So I'm just going to take some of the garlic bread for today. I'm not going to take too much because I'm just, um, this is really my appetizer to dinner, which will be later on. I just cut it down. Make sure you use a serrated knife when you're cutting bread. It definitely goes through a lot better um, than any other way. So I'll just tilt this up here. And probably shouldn't put your hand underneath like that, but you know, if you gotta do it, you gotta do it. I've got some soft butter here. It's been out at room temperature for quite a while. I've got maybe uh, three cloves or so, three or four cloves of garlic in there. And I want a nice healthy combination or a good ratio. Maybe about three tablespoons of butter to go with three cloves of garlic, something like that. I'm gonna just mash it all together and voila, you've got some garlic butter. Um, I always use unsalted butter again. I like, you know, like I said earlier, I like seasoning my own stuff. I'm not going to bother adding any salt to this because we're going to put a little Parmesan on top and we all know that's a bit of a salty cheese. Okay, got that all grinded up nicely. I'll just put some of that on my bread. Um, I'm going to stick this bread into the oven, uh, like just a little toaster oven, and I'll get the pasta going and um, I will be right back showing you how what it all looks like plated and maybe I'll even let you taste a bit of it. So my pasta is now cooked. I just drained the pasta and put it right back into the bowl. What I like to do first is I like to add a little bit of sauce right to the pasta first to make sure that everything is nice and covered. You know, we mix it in here good, because you want everything to start soaking up that sauce right from the beginning, especially this stuff here. I'm using that bocatini that I showed you earlier, and uh, it's soaking up all that magnificent sauce as we speak. Now, I'm just gonna take as much as we can, put it right down there in the pot, or in the dish. And now that all the pieces are nice and covered, now I'm gonna add a little bit more. And you know, you want your guests to always have too much sauce, not a not enough sauce. You know what I mean? Be generous with it. What the heck, eh? Now on top of that, we put a little bit of fresh parsley. And guys, you really got to think about this. When you're doing your presentation at the end, put a little greens on it at the end to show that you really love what you're doing and give everybody some love, right? You can use parsley. You could use sage, mint, uh, whatever you like, a little bit more fresh oregano. Now I'm putting some a little bit more Parmesan on right at the end. And there we go. We're going to put that together with a little garlic bread on the side. And I think that's a great meal for two. Uh, I'm going to give it a little taste right now and we'll see what we think of it. Um, I wish I could share some with you. You know, you guys are ever in the neighborhood. I'm right here. Why don't you give me a call and let's have a share of dinner. Anyway, let's take a try. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, I added about a tablespoon of sugar when you guys weren't looking. Now, um, just to take the edge off those tomatoes so they're not quite so acidic. Really good. We've got some crunchy garlic bread on the side. Just chop up some garlic nice and fine. And add, add it to the butter. Put a little parsley on at the end. And it's great for dipping in the sauce because, as we said earlier, we've got too much sauce, right? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you think you got a little bit of something out of it, give me a thumbs up. Like it if you could, please. 
And if you want to see more videos along the way, I'm going to put all kinds of different kinds of uh, recipes and things on here. Subscribe and follow me, and that way you can uh, get a notice whenever I put out a new one. Thanks very much, guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Enjoy. Bon appetit.